Hello, everyone. I'm Amy Michelle Freeman, a realtor with Medina Realty. And I'm Steve Mulvey, a loan officer with Medina Realty. And you're watching Tea Time Tips. How's it going, Steve? Going well. Going well. Yeah. Good, good, good. Did you have a good Memorial Day holiday weekend? Did a lot of lot of yard work, which mm. is, you know, we skipped we skipped spring, so that's that's always exciting. It's true. I have a caretaker that does all the yard work, but yes, we did skip spring. I judge by my wardrobe. Right. Yep. Um, so one thing that I was just saying earlier today to my transaction coordinator is I am not used to working this hard at this time of year because usually Memorial Day, we sort of tend to slow down and that has not been what's happening. So once again, I think as far as real estate's concerned, the spring market's still going, even though weather-wise, we sort of skipped it. So with that being said, I, with every buyer, am having the appraisal gap conversation, which I think we talked about last month. Um, But one thing in talking with you, with uh, a couple clients that are now on their fourth offer, with six to nine offers sort of being the average for sort of that under $500,000 sales price before buyers get homes, you were like, well, we should probably have the conversation about some creative ways to help sort of deal with that appraisal gap and helping them get the the house in multiple offers. So what wisdom do you have for us? Because we'll take anything at this point. So yeah, I mean, the appraisal gap's a big one, right? Um, Weirdly enough, appraisals are, I think, from our company are coming in, you know, somewhere between you know, 7% and 5% low. So mm. out of 100 appraisals, five or seven are coming in low, mm-hmm. which for this market and this appreciation style is, um, that's phenomenal. Like that means there's a lot of sales to compare, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's a good thing. Um, there, are, there are a bunch of different things you can do in an offer. Um, from our standpoint and mortgage, mortgage has their own opinions, of course, um, but uh, there's a bunch of different things you can do to maybe, I guess, fluff up your offer and make it look more appealing to the average seller. And, and all sellers and, and buyers can be different, but um, from a from a mortgage standpoint, um, there are a few other things that we have. I would call it tricks up our sleeve to to help our offer stand out against someone else's. All right, so. Um, one thing I saw on a listing is, um, and it, and this offer actually won one of my listings, uh, one of the offers put down a lower down payment so that they could use that cash to sort of help cover a hundred percent in the potential appraisal gap. Um, is that something you have seen buyers use on your end? Do you have anything yeah, else I- you might suggest? Yeah, I had that over the weekend. They had the 20% down VA loan, mm. um, which VA allows to do zero down to their price point. Um, and I basically just said the appraisal gap is kind of a moot point um, with, with that, um, just because they could technically go zero down. And with 20% down on a 550 offer, you're talking a hundred and you know ten thousand dollars down, right? So mm-hmm. um they could they could write in an appraisal gap coverage of $110,000, or they could just write something in the purchase agreement saying, you know, not a, not a realtor, but saying something like, you know, buyer reserves the right to put less down should the appraisal come in low, right? Mm-hmm. So something very simple like that um, opens up, yeah, we, we have an option to put less down or, or something like that. Yeah, I, I really like that that option for sure. And that option will work with a VA loan because I know sometimes there's, you know, with FHA and VA loans, there's some, you can't always there's, make there's a special There's a special clause that says you can back out. Um, there's, there's kind of a gray area in between there where you can back out, but you might not want to back out. So you can have something different post appraisal. But what our, what our 
what our strategy has been is get the appraisal done as quick as possible. Okay. Um, you know, barring the end of the month, which actually is today, um, you know, you want you want to have good comparable sales too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're not closing until August, probably makes more sense to wait until uh, mid July to get an appraisal because you know markets change and our markets have changed quite fast and quite furious. But um, you know, waiting might be an, a good option too on on an appraisal, knowing that. The house next door is closing in two weeks mm -hmm. um, for a, maybe a higher amount or something mm -hmm. like that. I think that really comes into play with uh, townhomes and condos, especially. Yeah, we did see that recently on, on a townhome. Yeah. So um, is there anything else when we're talking about creative ways to sort of cover this appraisal gap that we haven't discussed? Or we didn't know yeah, well, kind of one other thing that that I don't think we've ever discussed on Tea Time Tips is, is let's say you have an ability to, to get some cash, pay cash for that property, um, take it out of say retirement or, or stocks and things on a margin uh, for up to 90 days. Um, we can do technically what's called delayed finance. So mm. you pay cash for that house and then refinance once you close mm. um, and Get to get your money back. Not all of it, but a large portion of it back. Um, and that's that's been a very good strategy because then, a, you don't have an appraisal issue because you already closed. You already have a set price. Um, and and b, um, your offer is a cash offer. So yeah, it's a, it's a real nice offer, especially if you you know are looking at bridge financing or or something to that extent where you do have a bunch of cash. It's a really nice option. Mm, I like that one. And no, we have, you and I have not used that together on any of our clients. So we haven't, um, but it's, it's definitely in play. Okay. Uh, things like rent backs, um, up to 59 days, you can do a rent back. Mm -hmm. um, I have they, seen that a lot. I've seen more and more paying, you know, agents commission as buyers, you don't pay realtor commissions, um, but sellers do. Uh, and, and buyers offering to pay a portion of that that I've seen. Um, and then, you know, again, not an appraisal deal um, because it's kind of a separate piece on, on all the documents. So, um, you know, if you're offering, to, your buyers are offering to pay, let's call it 10,000 in seller paid closing costs uh, versus then what used to be normal is buyer paid closing costs, right? Um, you could you could go that route and say we'll pay ten thousand in the seller ten seller's closing costs, which covers you know commissions and covers their fees, their title fees, or something like that. So that's another nice option I've seen more and more. Yeah, I always get little bits of like knowledge nuggets when I talk to you. So well, that's, that's good. why I like doing it. Yes. Yes. Well, these were all very helpful. Let's, um, I'm going to go out here and some of the tips that we haven't used together. Uh, I actually think it's nice that we afterwards talk about that delayed finance. So, um, thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm Amy Michelle Freeman, Realtor with Dyna Realty. I'm Steve Mobier, Long.